What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Nissan Sentra courtesy of Hanover Nissan in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so it is a beautiful rainy day here in Pennsylvania and I am in the new Sentra. Reason being is because there are some tech upgrades actually for the 2021 model year. This thing is priced extremely well. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about the new Sentra, including acceleration, braking, steering wheel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so there are a few different trim levels for the 2021 Sentra. First one being the S, starting at $19,460. SV, which is the one we have today, starting at $20,520. Then the SR, starting at $21,800. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Sentra is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 149 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. RPM, 146 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to front wheels through a CVT. Zero to 60 time comes in at approximately eight seconds flat with MPG numbers coming in at 29 in the city, 39 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our new Sentra, I did want to mention to you guys that there are actually a few different drive modes. Of course, there is normal. That is what the Sentra naturally defaults to. But by the driver's side left knee, there is an eco button that is another one and there is a hidden sport mode on the center I say hidden because it's not labeled sport it's simply a horizontal line button located on the back side of the shifter here and so if you press that like I just did it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms at a much higher level it's also going to adjust the throttle response then as well so I do want to mention that to you guys because that is kind of the hidden drive mode that not a whole lot of people know about unless you're watching my videos of course so go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell notification button so you stay up to date on all that but anyways now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's see how quickly we can get our new sensor here up to speed in the rain all right here's our straightaway guys in three two one a little bit of slippage well it is wet out huh okay i gotta say i i Okay, I was focused on the acceleration, but what I was kind of more focused on, to be honest, was the CVT. Because I gotta say, that actually simulated a traditional automatic quite well, which is a very good thing, in my opinion, because CVTs are traditionally known to be somewhat emotionless, because it's like one giant rubber band kind of acceleration. But what Nissan did there with their CVT on the 2021 Sentra, at least, it actually simulated an automatic quite well. I didn't mind that acceleration for that particular reason. So well done, Nissan. That kind of surprised me. And the acceleration was, I don't know, it was pretty much as expect. Not the quickest thing in the world, but it'll merge you onto the highway without any issues. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And actually, the brake configuration is going to differ amongst the trim levels, believe it or not. For example, if you were to go with the S trim level, you're going to get front disc rear drum brakes. However, if you jump up to the SV or SR, you are going to get four-wheel disc brakes. So I wanted to mention that. And if you do go with that four-wheel ventilated disc brakes, you will get a 60 to zero stopping distance coming in at an impressive 114 feet. And so a lot of times with sedans, you're in the 120s. So 114 feet is dang good, if I'm being quite honest. So well done, Nissan, for that. And as far as the braking feel goes, it's literally perfect. There's no brake pedal delay. There's no soft spots. It is a very nice braking feel, if I'm being honest there. But continuing on, touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. Of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually not not that bad. It was one of the first things I noticed. A lot of times with compact cars, you do of course feel a good bit more of the road, but it's not bad comparatively speaking to some of the competition that I've driven as well. So ride quality is perfectly acceptable in the center without a doubt. Steering feel, 
Now that's the first thing I noticed. Starting in the 2020 model year for the Sentra, the steering feel got noticeably heavier, which is a brilliant thing because it better points you in the direction that you wanna go. It's a much better feeling of being in control here of this compact car. So love this steering feel in the new Sentra without a doubt. Well done, Nissan, especially for that. The touching on cabin noise a little bit, you do hear a little bit of the engine, but as far as that goes, that's pretty much about it. There isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin as we ride over a bridge right here. Still, not all that bad. It's pretty much as expected. The engine noise is the only thing you get when you really hit it, but other than that, it's perfectly fine. Touching on visibility, there is no flaws to the shape of the Sentra, so therefore visibility is perfectly fine. I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror, so definitely no issues there. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 Nissan Sentra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Nissan Sentra, finished in Scarlet Ember. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. First thing I wanna mention is a feature that you find on BMW and a lot of other luxury manufacturers, but active grille shutters actually do come standard across the board, meaning whenever the engine needs any additional cooling, those shutters are going to open up and then they will close back up then when that additional cooling is not needed, of course. So that's a pretty cool feature I like to mention to the sides halogen headlights do come with the S and SV trim levels they do come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night they will turn on automatically for you there LED daytime running lights also coming standard you will actually get LED headlights though if you were to go with the SR trim level of course that is not what you guys are looking at right now fog lights also coming with the SR trim level as well just below in the center though, Chrome V Motion front grille is going to come with the S and SV, and then you will actually get a dark Chrome V Motion front grille than if you were to go with the SR. But that pretty much rounds out the front. Let's go ahead and make our way now to the side of the center here. So since we are around to the side, first thing I wanna mention is there is actually a two-tone color scheme that is available for the Sentra, like a black roof, for example. It's a pretty cool look to it, so I did wanna mention that. Chrome belt line molding does come standard on the Sentra. You can find a floating roof line along the C pillar towards the back there. I think that's a pretty cool look. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are power adjustable side mirrors for all trims. They will be heated for the SV and SR trims, body colored for the S and SV, and then gloss black sign mirrors for the SR then an SR is also actually going to give you LED integrated turd signals so I did want to mention that as well and take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers for the S trim level 16 inch aluminum alloys for the SV so therefore that is what you guys are looking at right now and 18 inch aluminum alloys then for the SR trim level did want to also mention though that SR trim level is also going to give you essentially a lip kit around the entire exterior of this thing so a little added side skirts for the SR trim level at least as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Sentra. So since we are around back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, you guys can see that. Just below that, a rear spoiler is actually only going to come standard with the SR, however, it is optional, of course, for the other trim levels. So we do have it here on our SV. Just below that, you can find some trim level badging as well. And just below all of that, you can actually find a body colored rear diffuser, which is pretty cool coming with the SR and SV trim levels. And just below it all, there is actually a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away, but having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Sentra, to go ahead and open up that rear trunk, there is a button that you hold on the key fob that is one way. There's also a button on the trunk itself and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up quite a bit then. Also wanted to mention to you guys, in that cargo area, there is some cargo lighting back there. And if you were wondering if the Sentra had to fix a flat versus a spare tire, if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, it actually does have the full spare tire back there. So that is pretty cool. That's what I prefer personally. But 
and make our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.7 inches so for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there did want to also mention though i was able to find a rear center armrest with cup holders which is pretty cool and there is a single usb charging port back there as well for the kids to stay charged up so that is definitely a necessity in this day and age of course but so then make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats do come with the s and s v trim levels you will find a sport cloth with orange stitching then if you were to go with the sr quilted leather is possibly the best very best setup that i've ever seen in the center that is going to be optional for the sv trim level only so this trim level that we have today you can actually get quilted leather in so that is a pretty cool look if you guys want to look at nissan's website for that one that's pretty cool heated front seats then are going to be optional for the sv and sr trim levels then as well and overall though as far as the seat comfort goes that we have today in our cloth seats i will say it is perfectly fine i've had absolutely no issues with the seat comfort i could easily see myself going on a long road trip here in the new Sentra so no issues there then take a look at the steering wheel it is of course tilt and telescoping and is leather wrapped if you were to go with the SV or SR trim levels and then heated steering wheel is actually going to be optional for the SV if you wanted that as well then make your way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key Nissan logo at the top lock unlock button pop the rear hatch the circular button near the Nissan logo that is going to be your remote start which comes on the S SV and SR trim levels only. But then if you were curious as to the push button start, that actually does come standard on all trim levels. So therefore, all I am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter. And so once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. Gives you a ton of different information like trip A, trip B, of course, but also how many miles you have left until you hit empty, which when I started driving this one said 365. So that is pretty darn impressive, especially in a compact car. Digital speedometer you could check out up there as well. Average fuel economy economy at any given time of course tire pressure information radio settings safety information the list goes on really just about everything you could possibly want up there but then make your way to overall interior quality if you wanted a power moonroof for the center it is going to be optional for the sv and sr trims it doesn't come standard on any particular trim level but you can still get it if you wanted to go that route dual zone climate control coming standard on the sv and sr so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there Auto dimming rear view mirror is going to be optional for the SR and I did want to mention to you guys we actually do have a package option that gives us a frameless rear view mirror with home link controls to up to three different garage doors. I found that pretty cool. It is a $440 option but I love that because the alternative is the clunky rattling garage door opener that clips to your sun visor. So I do like home link whenever that is available for sure. Also another option we have here is something called the lighting package that goes for $500 that gives you ground illumination at night and also interior ambient lighting then as well but overall interior quality is pretty much as i expected it to be there are some hard plastics but i do like the contrast stitching found just above the passenger side glove box i like the circular air vents they're very audi-esque so that is a pretty cool look for me just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet usb charging port phone charging port and auxiliary charging port kind of touching all bases there just beside the shifter you have dual cup holders just behind that a little bit of storage there as well and within the center armrest you can find a very deep amount of storage actually for a compact car i will say that so overall the interior quality that we have here in our particular spec today it's not bad but like i said if you go with that optional quilted leather look for the sv trim level that is going to be the very best interior quality that you can get in the center if that is important to you but then take a look at the tech display it is a seven inch color touchscreen display for the s 8 inch color touchscreen display for the SV and SR. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way, but here is the main new feature for the 2021 Sentra. Android Auto Apple CarPlay is now standard for every single trim level, whereas it didn't come with the S trim level in previous years. It now does come with that base trim level of the Sentra. So you gotta love that. Essentially what that is, is if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Sentra via USB cable, and you have free navigation displayed up on that tech display without having to buy any factory navigation system. Also, you can like and dislike your Pandora songs. There's a bunch of different compatible apps, so that is definitely a big deal to me, at least. But anyways, you can also check out your radio information 
information up on that tech display. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, four speakers are going to come with the S, six speakers coming with the S, V, and S, R. And there is one more optional sound system available. That is going to be an eight speaker Bose sound system. We don't have that today. We do have the six speaker. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on Sirius XM here. See what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> So that was kind of a mixed bag for me. I gotta be honest, the bass was pretty good for a six speaker sound system, but when you turn it up a little bit louder, the clarity does get a little bit muffled the higher in the volume that you go. But then again, it is a six speaker sound system. That's kind of what I expected, but not the clearest six speaker sound system that I've ever heard. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the center in reverse, you will find a rear view camera that takes up the entire screen of the infotainment screen here, which isn't always the case. So that's why I emphasize that, which is always though, is going to lead us into safety. And so to start IIHS top safety pick if you go with the SR trim level, because it needs those LED headlights in order to get that designation. But front side, side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring at this point, but the good stuff that does come standard across the board, by the way, forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, rear automatic braking, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, a driver attention monitoring system, high beam assist, and lane trace assist as well. That is a good bit of standard safety, even for the base trim, even for the S trim level, I should say. So that is wonderful. Well done Nissan for that. But then if you were to go with the SV and SR, you're also going to get adaptive cruise control then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new Sentra, a great steering feel. That's always the first thing I noticed when I got in the 2020 model year and the 2021, very heavy. So I love that great braking, 60 to zero and 114 feet is quite brilliant if I'm being honest. Also great pricing, great price points for every single trim level really. A lot of times when you look at other manufacturers, let's say the Civic, it can get quite pricey, but I will say the Sentra is priced quite right also that quilted leather that is available has a very upscale look very Audi ish look so I love that although we don't have it today of course but as far as the room for improvement goes one thing that I'm starting to notice more and more and I'm sure it's gonna come to the Nissan Sentra as well is wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay I love that it comes standard on the base trim level now but the next step is going to be wireless you don't actually have to hook it up and you don't have any cluttered wires everywhere so that is one thing I would look for in the future and of course course it's not the quickest thing in the world it doesn't do bad when you put it in that sport mode that I told you guys about remember that's the horizontal line just underneath the shifter there but still could be a little bit quicker but anyways that about rounds out this review you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.